South Yorkshire is probably not the first place that would normally come to mind in the context of veganism, or even vegetarianism for that matter, considering Yorkshire's traditional association with massive Sunday roast dinners and a down-to-earth rural life. But be prepared for a surprise. The town of Mexborough was actually home to the founder of modern-day veganism, Donald Watson, who passed away 14 years ago at the age of 95. And on Saturday the 9th of November 2019, his role in initiating this trend was celebrated by the unveiling of a blue plaque, courtesy of Mexborough and District Heritage Society, to coincide with the observance of World Vegan Month. I quote from the Vegan Society's own website at vegansociety.com. The Vegan Society first began as an offshoot of the Vegetarian Society in November 1944, when Donald Watson, Elsie Shrigley and friends felt the important need to distinguish the difference between not eating meat and not eating any products from animals. We began celebrating the founding of the Vegan Society in 1994, and every year since, November the 1st has been marked as World Vegan Day, with its significance growing to be internationally recognized. In a natural progression, World Vegan Day evolved into World Vegan Week, and now what we celebrate as World Vegan Month, where vegans and veganism is celebrated in workplaces, shops, restaurants, and in homes all over the world. World Vegan Month is celebrated around the world as a time to recognize how far the vegan movement has come, to highlight how accessible and beneficial a vegan lifestyle is, and to encourage the vegan curious to adopt veganism by sharing advice, recipes and ideas. 2019 marks 75 years since the foundation of the Vegan Society. What a long way we've come since then. End quote. So, the key player in the founding of the Vegan Society was Mexborough's Donald Watson. And this brings us to the main focus of Saturday's event, celebrating his life with the unveiling of a blue plaque in the town. Donald Watson was a woodwork teacher born in Mexborough, Yorkshire on the 2nd of September 1910. For much of his adult life he called the Lake District his home where he was a keen hill walker until his death at the age of 95 on the 16th of November 2005. The son of a headmaster in a mining community, he spent considerable time during his childhood on his Uncle George's farm. It was there that he became familiar with the harsh realities of animal agriculture, and at the age of 14 he resolved to abstain from eating meat. Eighteen years later, he also gave up dairy products, having decided that the production of milk-related products was also unethical. His philosophy was to avoid harm to all living creatures, a concept which many of us today would describe as ahimsa. A non-smoker and teetotaler, as well as a conscientious objector, he took a keen interest in political issues throughout his life, although he was non-partisan. Aside from walking, he also enjoyed cycling, photography, organic vegetable growing and playing the violin. 
In November 1944, he and his wife Dorothy, along with four friends, founded the Vegan Society. They decided they needed a word to describe their new way of life, and the word vegan was born. The first edition of the Society's quarterly newsletter, The Vegan News, appeared that same year. Here you can see him in later life reading that first edition, which will form the basis of a later vlog on this channel towards veganism. So watch this space. On Saturday the 9th of November 2019, the plaque was unveiled by Donald Watson's nephew, Dr Tim Cook, and Deputy Mayor Paul Ray at New Pastures Primary School, Doncaster Road, Mexborough. It wasn't possible to erect the plaque on Donald Watson's old house, but it was felt that sighting it on the wall of his old primary school was equally appropriate, not least as this is now known as New Pastures. Due to the chilly November weather and the school's location next to a busy main road, only the actual unveiling ceremony took place on site with the remainder of the proceedings relocated to the nearby business centre, previously Donald's old grammar school. As mentioned earlier, following the unveiling ceremony, the event relocated to the business centre for a buffet lunch and a very entertaining programme of poetry, reminiscences about Donald Watson's life, including the reading of some of his thoughts and extensive writings, together with various other short speeches. There was also a surprise appearance briefly of a well-known public personality. Watch the following 35 minute clip to reveal who that was. I, I think we're going to have some speeches now, uh, but um, I don't know if we're going to have, we were going to have some poetry reading. Mike, are we still having a bit of poetry reading? Yeah, like some vegan uh, poetry in a moment. I think Mike's uh, organising uh, that. And uh, uh, we've done this, this wonderful display that um, Julia Ashby's uh, done, our, um, our research officer. Absolutely wonderful stuff here. And there's pictures of uh, um, the Watson family in the 1920s there uh, at, the, at the farm uh, that they had at, uh, at, at Barbara. And we've also got a, another photograph, I don't know where it's gone, but of the, uh, uh, it was a farm, a popular farm as well, we, we, we acquired that yesterday, so it's a wonderful uh, display here, come and have a look at it, and I think this, I think this is Donald's 
one of Donald's uh, pieces of work as well, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh, and is this his walking stick? Yes. Yeah, yeah. wonderful uh, uh, display here. Um, I'm going to thank uh, people later on, but thanks to, to Sam Colver, uh, I've got in touch with each other, um, well, at the beginning of the year, and, the, and Sam and uh, the Vegan Society were very, uh, very uh, uh, overjoyed, really, to think this thing was happening, but we said that we'd leave it till November, because that's the 75th uh, anniversary, uh, of uh, the founding of the Vegan uh, Society. Um, and I don't know if you noticed on, on the plaque, it actually says the 75th anniversary. I'm bound on this, seven, well, it doesn't say I'm bound, it said commemorating the 75th anniversary of the Vegan Society. We actually wanted on it also November 2019. And unfortunately, the manufacturers left that off. But what we've decided, we'll have another little plaque uh, saying that it was unveiled on the 9th of November 2019 uh, by um, the, uh, the, the civic mayor and, and also uh, a, a team. So we're going to have a little plaque underneath there, which will be, will be very nice. Just, just, can I just tell you a little story? When we're having the, having the plaque put up, uh, a young lad from the council came along uh, um, Mick his name, lovely lad, puts, he's up the ladder and I hand the plaque to him and he looks down at me and he says, are you Donald Watson? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if he thought I was the sort of person that would have uh, plaques uh, actually dedicated to themselves, uh, but I said to him, I said, uh, no, I said, uh, uh, I, I'm not, you have to be dead before you get one of these, Mick. I said, uh, well that's not the only qualification. You also have had to go uh, on and achieve uh, uh, great things. Um, and Donald actually, uh, actually did that. And it's, we're proud to think that he actually came from Mexbra. He also went to this school. He was here probably after 1922. Uh, 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 and he, he became a vegan. At 14 years of age, so it would have been at this school that he became a vegan. And I, I noticed the, the press release from, uh, from the Vegan Society actually says uh, that Max Bruce is surrounded by animals. <laughs> uh, well, it isn't actually, it was at Barnborough where he first, at his uh, grandfather's farm, that he actually saw uh, pigs being, uh, uh, being slaughtered, that he then uh, uh, turned to uh, to vegetarianism first, but, but um, although he must have been about the town, um, during the First World War, and about the time he was a young, young lad, um, there was 25, 25 poor butchers uh, in, in Mexbra, and there was no abattoir, and actually they slaughtered the pigs at the back of the butcher shop. So Donald must have heard uh, the horrors of pigs streaming as well, and that must have actually also uh, 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 also, also must have actually uh, deterred him to, to, to actually become a, a vegetarian. Uh, and I think that he he, he must have been a tremendous uh, man because he must have been under great pressure in a place like like Lexter. Uh, and, and he, he, he was really one on, on his own, and he's gone on now, as we know. Uh, it's now a, a, a worldwide uh, a movement. Um, now, I'm going to shut up now, I usually speak too long. So I'd like to invite Tim, uh, Tim Cook, uh, Dr. Tim Cook, the, uh, the nephew of Donald, to say a few words. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uncle Don was the um, younger of my mum's two older brothers. He was 37 years old when I was born, and I was 58 when he died. My earliest memories of him was introducing me to the violin uh, when I was about six. And I have to say, for the last 65 years, I've traded this gift, and I play in 
chamber groups and orchestras, as did Uncle Don in, in Keswick. Um, he was a very skilled craftsman and a teacher, uh, as well as two pieces of his work. I've got a couple of stories he told me um, from his woodworking career, which will give you a bit of a feel for the man. His policy was to spend the first year teaching his lads to use the tools, and after that they could make anything they wanted. One boy was sewing two-inch softwood into quarter-inch lengths, and Uncle Don asked him what he was doing, and he said he was making sawdust for his hamster, sir. <laughs> Another boy asked if he could make a barn for his dad's farm, and Uncle Don said, yes, as long as you bring the wood, so they brought a tractor with a trailer with all this lumber on, and they made a barn in the wood workshop, and then lumbered it all and took it to bits and sent it back to the farm, and it was erected on this farm in Borrowdale in the Lake District, and Uncle Don told me that the last time he saw it, it had had a fireplace put in and was being converted to a holiday cottage. <laughs> um, in addition to veganism, Don was a very committed pacifist, being a conscious ob conscientious objector in the Second World War, as was his elder brother Norman. I've seen correspondence between Don and his father on the subject, both arguing their very different positions, but always passionately and ever calmly and politely. Um, I last met him when he and his brother Norman came to stay with us in 1996. I have a picture of the two of them, which is here at the time. Don was 85, Norman was 90. My memory of that visit is that Uncle Don's intense interest in everything, particularly subjects which were new to him. Um, Steph and I were pretty exhausted by the end of the weekend because it was like a continuous oral examination because whatever we said, he really wanted to know more about. I was running a company at the time and so he gave me some advice on delegation which came from Moses' father-in-law. I still quote this in the business school lectures in Oxford and you can look it up in Exodus chapter 18 verses 13 to 27. If you're not familiar with that, I have it with me. Um, but it's all about delegation. And I put this into modern English and asked the students in the business school where they think it's from, and they quote all these American management gurus, and then I point out, actually, it's the book of Exodus.
criticise his letter arranging the trip to Oxford in 96 contains the following. The visit should be before September the 2nd, which will be my 86th birthday, when I hope to keep an appointment with the Cairn on top of Scorfell. That's the highest mountain in the country. I usually walk about 20 miles a week, snowdrifts permitting, but I could step this up to 20 miles a day to fit in with any programme you plan. We didn't have any such programmes. <laughs> um, on the subject of diet, Uncle Don's letter concludes with some dietary advice. Catering for us need not be a problem. Both Norman and I have followed the wisdom of the following poem for most of our lives. I quote, There is a road to earthly bliss. The secret would you know? Five words contain it. It is this. Eat little and eat slow. Or is it that your lot would be celestial happiness? It is but a matter of degree. Eat slower still and less. He continues, also the old Chinese product is pro uh, proverb <coughs> is worth following. If you eat much, eat little. For by eating little, you live long. And by living long, you eat much. More wisdom in August, Don. <coughs> so, in conclusion, I'm sure that the current spate of anti-vegan press and social media would have surprised and saddened. But he would have met it with a calm reasonableness which would have impressed even those who disagreed with him, as he did in the Second World War when his pacifism was challenged. Thank you. She's um, doing some work on the, um, uh, the notebooks of Donald Watson and his personal papers, um, actually trying to um, make sure they're digitised and, and kept um, for future generations. She's chosen a reading from um, his Nature Journal and she's going to share that with you today. So I'd like to invite her, Dr Kate Stewart. but it's involved a lot more water than it really uh, should have done. So, as uh, Sam says, my name is Kate Stewart, I'm a sociologist and I'm currently working on a project with Dr Matthew Cole from the Open University um, and we have, uh, with Tony's very generous support and help, been looking at Donald Watson's private papers so that we can digitise and preserve them uh, and the things that he wrote. And we were asked to look out something from, from the <coughs> stuff that we've been looking at uh, for today, and we chose something from the Nature Diary, which is actually um, uh, here. If you want to read a little bit more about what you have to say about the squealing pigs, August 22nd, we nearly chose August 22nd, but we have instead chosen October the 18th, 1929. So this is a full 15 years before he invented the word vegan, so where he talks about vegetarian uh, here, just bear in mind, he'd not come up with the idea <laughs> at the word um, yet. Um, so this, these are his thoughts in the Nature Diary on October the 18th. Most vegetarians are so merely because they do not think it right that any animals should be killed in order to supply man with food, and this is undoubtedly correct. The majority of people think it a pitiable sight to see animals being led to the slaughterhouse, and they would be more so impressed if they saw them killed. But it is not merely this which has made me a vegetarian. For as we study nature, we find meat eaters among fishes, insects, birds and mammals, and we see them killing in order to live. But if man was a natural meat eater, he too would be given some physical gift by which he could obtain his meat by slaying, but this he has not got. He could never swim after any fish and catch it, nor could he chase a hare and run it down, nor could he slay a beast if he had to meet it without any weapons or knives. It's evidently wrong to catch a fish with nets or hooks, or to shoot birds, or to slay animals with knives. For all other meat eaters tackle their prey barehanded with only those devices with which God has given them. There are other reasons which show that man is a natural vegetarian. Nay, I can find absolutely no reason whatever to show that he should be carnivorous. Firstly, if we were meant to eat meat, we should starve without it. But this is not the case. For when one lives on a good vegetarian diet, one becomes far healthier and energetic than when, when one fed on meat. 
A vegetarian needs less sleep, can work longer and harder, and, according to all records, lives much longer than a meat eater. In a previous entry, I mentioned a few people who were vegetarian and who lived to exceptionally old ages. Meat is a highly expensive food and needs a great amount of labour before it is made palatable. And I feel sure that if some movement could be formed by which all men would become voluntary vegetarians, it would be a great step towards living as we were meant to live and would be greatly welcomed by our overworked housewives. Right, th thank you very much. Um, <coughs> oh, we got, Mike, have we got this uh, vegan poetry? Well, uh, we, we're going to have some vegan poetry uh, now. We've got a, we work very closely with various groups in Mexico, and we work with uh, the Mexico Read to Write poetry group. Um, and Mike there, Mike uh, O'Brien, is a member of that group and he's a member of the Heritage Society as well. I was quite surprised to learn there's quite a lot of vegan poetry, so I think we're going to have a little bit, uh, about 10 minutes of vegan poetry, is that right? That's, that's fine, that's lovely, yeah. Well, um, what a fantastic gathering of, of people from, from all quarters of, of the country and, and, and belief that we've got here today. It's, I'm really proud to be a member of the Heritage Society and, and celebrate the, the, the people from Mexpre that have done great things. It's only a couple of weeks ago that we were celebrating the poet Harold Bassingham and we had all of the Mexpre and District Read to Write Poetry Group down to celebrate that. We were so keen to, um, to celebrate Bassingham's work in poetry that when they found out we were the Heritage Society were doing one for um, Donald Watson. They were keen to come and do some poems on a the theme of veganism. Um, so there are three fellow members of Read to Write here with me today. Um, I've just got a very short poem that, that jumped out. I was doing some completely different work yesterday. And uh, this very short vegan poem just appeared as if by magic. You should say, read him that one, Mike. I think I can actually remember it. They said that he would eat no stem. His wife would eat no leaf. And so, between the two of them, the salad came to grief. <laughs> Very short vegan poem. I'd like to introduce uh, Tracy, who's going to come and give you some more considered vegan poetry. Thank you very much, Tracy. Poetry, and I see that Benjamin Zephaniah is also a vegan, and uh, he's he's actually written a book of vegan poetry. But uh, I thought I'd, I picked out one of his poems, and he sort of made a, a shopping list of um, fruit and vegetables. So I just took his lead on that one. <coughs> Taste a rainbow, you will find wealth in your good health if you eat a rainbow. Beetroot, strawberries, cherries, nothing rhymes with oranges, yellow peppers, sweet corn, kale, sprouts, cabbages, greens. Fight no battle of the bulge with blueberries. Thank you. Benjamin Zephariah, <coughs> called Pride. I've got no bodies inside me. All of me is me. I will not eat nobody else, so I say what, what I see. I do not plan to eat young sheep. I will not eat a hen. I am so proud of what I am, and I must say it again. I've got no bodies inside me. All of me is me. I will not eat anybody else. So what you see is me. Hi everybody. Uh, I first became involved, I'm not a vegan, but I 
became involved in vegetarianism in the 90s and I was doing my first uh, BA Honours degree in women's studies and we're looking at the exploitation of women and the exploitation of animals and the two go together and I remember reading a book called Meet the Feminist Issue and on the front of the book there was a picture of a, I think it was a bull and I could never get my head round. I've got four brothers and they always used to say stuff like Core, I really like the buttocks on a woman and I love the breast and I love the thigh and I used to think, do you know what, that's how we talk about meat and animals. So when I saw this book, I thought, yeah, but, you know, I can't remember the name of the author, that was quite a long time ago, but that sort of got me uh, interested and involved in vegetarianism. So the first poem that I've written, it's called Conscious Disassociation. Come see the stripy aprons in the butcher's shop. He knows his fillets from his Barnsley chop. Regular customer, she knows her lot. Clan goes the scales as they weigh the meat. Not a thought for the cow or the slaughtered sheep. Counting pennies in her purse. Inadvertently supporting the animal hearse. Squishy liver from the local lamb. Belly pork and joints of ham. Crusty pies and bacon slices. All wrapped up in animal disguises. Butcher's hooks to hang them high, wooden block to chop and trim, mincing machine to squash them in, pot the meat in the pan, fried with onions, carrots and tarragon, lost identity of the cow, the pig and the lamb, as she kindly thanks the butcher's man. He handles his meat, smiling with pride. The butcher stands proud behind the glass screen, hiding from the animal scream disassociated from those that died, separating the meat from the hide. So my dear, enjoy your treat, place in your back your piece of sheep, death from the bleat, not a word for the relationship to man and meat. Ignore the blood and the smell, it's only an animal, what the hell? There is no remorse for the empty shell, eat your meat, it will serve you well. At last the butcher shuts up shop, smug inside as he served his lot. Another day awaits his fare, no sorrow to wear, the animals have sealed their fate. Tomorrow served up as number 58. <laughs> also tend to be nature lovers as well so and I did notice that Donald was a keen rambler so I just think the two seem to go together so this is the tree spirit of woman her season is known by that which she bears fairness buds blossom and berries the bough fragmented and bent severed cut and burnt ornamented Felt and adorned for her beauty, slender, tall, flexible in the wind, yet strong and grounded, deeply rooted. Sycamore, ash, oak, and birch, to name a few, in the vast forest, amidst the sages of life, seek solitude and comfort in her arms, and shelter ready for the awakening. Wisdom found within her, reach, sit quietly ponder and retreat. A couple more. This is uh, another nature poem and it's called Sand. A thousand grains from the ocean floor, vastness yet so small, specks of life, intricate and individual, yet together form a desert, alone and insignificant golden, white, die, dramp and clumpy, a castle or a fortress held strong, a wind blowing it afar, a tide washing it away, flat, gone, but still there, individual in its own right, integral to the mix, holding it all together, strengthening the cracks. And the final one is the shell. Place gently against my ear, capturing the sounds of the bygone years, 
laughter caught up in her cavity, iridescent in the moon, worn away by the gentle movement of the ocean back and forth. Empty now, nothing within, grains of sand fill the void, individual yet difficult to identify amongst the many. Yes, I know this stillness, I chose it, I felt it. Thank you. Well, thanks very much for that. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else would like to come up and say a few words. I don't know if one of the councillors would like it. Sean, would you like to just say a few words? This is Councillor Sean Gibbons, who's been uh, uh, very, but all the councillors have been very, very helpful in, in, uh, in putting this event on round. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, just, just very, very short and sweet, but just to say this is a huge pleasure to be part of this event. And the Blue Plaques now, in the Blue Plaque Committee that we formed with the Heritage Society about a year ago, was it something? And it's, I mean, this must be the seventh Blue Plaque now that's uh, been uh, unveiled. So, hugely proud moment from Exborough. So many people uh, like Donald uh, that have done so much uh, for, for the area, but also this is, a, this is a huge, this is a global. This is a massive achievement that's now a global, it's, it's, it's historic. So I want to say special thanks to Bill, Lawrence, uh, Margaret, Julia and the team pulling everything together uh, because it is hard work. Even just to get the blue plaque in situ, just to get it there in time with the right fixtures, uh, it is, it's huge and it's, uh, it's just one of those historic occasions. So I just want to say thank you and thank you to Sam and everyone from the Vegan Society for supporting it and all the other partners. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much, Sean. Um, oh, sorry, the nice as well. From the right, from, from, from Helen, yeah. Yeah, I, I, well, thanks, thanks very much. Uh, oh, I think this is, this is tremendous. We've, we've had the other blue plaque uh, um, events. And uh, we, had, we had one for uh, uh, professional footballer, Eric, Eric Brook, and um, I, I won't go into the, to, to the details of Eric, but he, he was a very, very famous professional footballer, came from Mexpra, and uh, we actually brought all the, um, uh, the Brook family together on that one, and I'm really pleased to say that we brought the, the Watson family together. And it's actually a great pleasure to, 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 to meet you all. So thank you very, very much uh, for coming. Um, I mean, we'll carry on after, but I'd like to just to, to wind it up in the sense that we uh, uh, want to thank some people, then people can carry on having a drink. In fact, there's a lot of drink there that, to, to be drunk. I know people are driving, but uh, if you can perhaps have another drink or a beer, you'll be very welcome to. I'd like to thank uh, Sam, uh, Sam Colbert very much for all the work she's done. She's the Head of Communications at uh, the Vegan Society and I think she's done a, an absolutely tremendous job. Sam, thank you very much. <laughs> and, and Tim, uh, Tim uh, Cook and his family, thank you very much for coming down. Um, I know that he was actually desperate to get here. I, I, I spoke to him yesterday on the phone and he said, I will be there. Uh, he used those famous words, do or die. <laughs> <laughs> he would do or die, he will be there. But as uh, the, the, the last person who said do or die, he actually kept his promise and he's, he, uh, he, he, he's here to, uh, this afternoon. Thanks very much, Tim. And thanks very much for the family for coming around. Paul Ray and... Uh, uh, Mrs. Um, Marston are, are, are gone now, but I thank them for coming. Uh, Ed Miliband, our MP, I think he's gone now, but he did yes. make an appearance, and that was that was really good because Sam has met him before, Sam, haven't you? And uh, uh, I think he's very supportive of what we're we're doing. Here, Ed Miliband is posing for a photo opportunity with Dr. Tim Cook, Doc Donald Watson's nephew, and Sam Colvert, Head of Communications at the Vegan Society. And in this next picture, he is 
talking to Sam Culvert and Bill Lawrence, the secretary of the Mexborough and District Heritage Society. Thanks very much to the Mexborough councillors for all, all they've done and all my friends uh, in, uh, and, and, and colleagues in uh, the Mexborough Heritage Society. Uh, that's Margaret particularly uh, and, and Julia has done this wonderful uh, display there. And thanks to the poetry group, thanks to Mike and the poetry group. Also to Pete Newman, the, the owner of this lovely building. We think this is a fabulous building. Um, there's been lots of different uh, uh, individuals who've been to this school. Um, in, in fact, Tim himself went to this school and there's a number of people who went, went to this this wonderful school. Uh, Ted Hughes, the poet laureate, went, and there's, there's actually dozens of people that's uh, about edu been ed educated at this uh, particular school. Also to um, Helen McCabe for doing the, the, the vegan buffet. I hope you enjoyed it. I've sampled it myself yet, but I will do. Uh, thanks very much uh, uh, to Helen. I think Helen's gone. Uh, no, but thank you. All right, thanks very much, Helen. Can I just finish out by saying that um, I think we're, we're all pretty desperate. I was talking to Sam on the phone uh, yesterday, and we were all pretty desperate that we wouldn't make it because of the, of the weather. Uh, but I'm glad to see people have, have made it. Uh, but it's a bit, a bit strange in, in one way because I think, you know, the floods that we've got, I was listening to our local BBC weatherman, uh, Paul Hudson, and he said it was um, the result of undeniable uh, global warming and climate change. And it made me think, uh, when he said it about weather, that of course, um, if Donald was here today, he would be actually in the forefront of that campaign uh, uh, for against uh, global warming. Um, because I think his ethos, if, I, <laughs> if I'm correct, was that, uh, that nature should be uh, as one uh, with man, or mankind should be as one with nature, uh, uh, and he should be in harmony. And I think if he was here today, he would be actually in that campaign. And it's, it's really good to see that the environmental campaign is being led by a lot of young people. And I've got a, a bit of a sadness, uh, actually, that uh, the school, Doncaster Road School, or the, the school, uh, New Pastures, hasn't set a representative from that school. Uh, I'm really sad about that. But I hope the children there will go on to realise that one of their old boys was Donald Watson. And I hope that they learn about veganism uh, and uh, people's different lifestyles and also uh, about the importance of, of, of preserving uh, the environment and in, uh, preserving the world. And I think they can do that uh, through Donald Watson. Thanks very much. Of course, this record of last Saturday's event wouldn't be complete without proper recognition of the sterling work of the Mexborough and District Heritage Society, whose secretary, Bill Lawrence, ably compared the blue plaque proceedings as seen earlier in this video. The Society is a local organisation for anyone around the world with an interest in Mexborough. They have a large archive of photographs and information and produce a regular newsletter. They've been involved in various projects from tracing friends and relatives to restoring the Glassby Arch. The latter, a five metre high Gothic arch, was commissioned in 1860 by John Reed, a local pottery owner, from the Mexborough stonemason and sculptor Robert Glasby, known as Sculptor to the Queen in view of his work for Queen Victoria, including the Albert Memorial. 
the arch stood in the grounds of John Reed's house in Market Street, Mexborough, for around a hundred years, but was moved to Fern Villa, Church Street, to make way for the construction of the Mexborough Bypass, on the condition that it remained the property of the people of the local community and permanently visible. However, it fell into disrepair and out of view when Fern Villa was demolished and replaced by another house in 2007. Following subsequent proceeds of crime seizure of that property by the National Crime Agency, the arch was gifted back to the people of Mexborough in perpetuity, in perpetuity in 2014 care of the Mexborough Charity Trust. Once restored, it returned to Church Street, where it can now be seen in the grounds of Mexborough's alms houses. The Heritage Society is justly proud of this particular project, unveiled almost exactly four years ago. Anyone interested in learning more about Mexborough or the Heritage Society can contact the latter at their website, mexborahheritage.com. Towards Veganism is the YouTube blog of a vegetarian and aspiring vegan, celebrating and following the worldwide trend towards a more compassionate and eco-friendly diet. Please support the channel by subscribing now and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. You can also encourage others to join the movement by sharing this and other videos on the Towards Veganism channel. Finally, constructive comments are of course always welcome. Thank you for watching.